Well, this uh, series of Lent, the weeks leading up to Easter, we've been uh, doing a series on what we would give up, what we would give up for um, Lent. And uh, this week I was assigned, probably by Jeremy, but I don't know, you know, that's the, he's usually the one who assigns me, uh, to do, uh, giving up control, but I just couldn't do it. <laughs> you know, it was one of those things where I worked on it all week and I just couldn't do it. And uh, so I'm going in the third direction today, sorry. Um, uh, giving up the rough edges. And um, it was funny because uh, I've been doing a lot of driving since we moved up north. Uh, I drive a lot because Highway 5 is usually stopped north and south at any time of day. <laughs> and I've discovered that pretty much my only alternative is Aurora, right? They call it Highway 99. <laughs> you can get up to 20 miles an hour, you know, it's hard to breathe at that speed. But uh, anyway, I was all the same. So anyway, I'm getting pretty used to the drive now. And uh, on Thursday, uh, I've gotten adept at watching cars. There are certain cars stand out, right? And so there was this car, it came roaring up behind me. And you know how they get right on you? Like, I should go park so they can go by, you know? And and uh, I was even in the slow lane, and uh, and it ride me, ride me, ride me, and then suddenly swerved over into the bus lane, and then cut back in. Did I scare you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I mean, you shouldn't do this, you know? <laughs> And, 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 cut it back. and I saw he had bumper stickers all over his car. And the first one, I couldn't see it at first, but it took a couple of blocks until I got up close enough to read it. And, it, and it's, it said this, I wrote it down. I must have self-confidence to drive a car like this. <laughs> and I actually identified with that. I felt better, you know. And, uh, and, and then I looked, and, and I was ready to uh, engage in some of the... It exchanges that drivers often do <laughs> <laughs> under stress. And, 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 and on the other side, he had another bumper sticker down among all the clutter of stuff. And it, and it said, uh, mean people suck. <laughs> and I thought, okay, Lord, I got a sermon. <laughs> it's not going to be on control. It's going to be from my friend who inspired me this week um, on Aurora. And you know who you are out there, you know, <laughs> on the internet. You know who you are. Anyway, um, so our scripture today is from Titus. It's a very small letter uh, in the very back of the Bible. And it's chapter 3. Um, follow me, starting verse 3. At, at, what at one time... We also were foolish. We also were disobedient, deceived, and addicted by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we've done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of, of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. And I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what's good. These, are, these things are excellent and profitable for everyone, but avoid foolish controversies. So Lord, teach us. Teach us from your word. Teach us how we might leave behind the way we were and experience who we can be by your spirit by your grace. Amen. Well, giving up something for Lent. I, 
I used to joke about, I'm going to give up joy, or I'm going to give up generosity. <laughs> and I realized that those kind of jokes came out of a lifetime of being a person with some pretty rough edges. That's me. Uh, I don't know if it's genetic or just the way I was raised or just the choices that I make. I find it's easier to react in a rough way than to respond in kindness. And so, as I look at this passage and I think about the nature of who God is and how God's character, one of the things when Jesus comes into our life, he wants to bring the characteristics of God's character and make them our own, right? I thought, well, maybe, maybe this is the year that I give up the rough edges. Maybe this is the year I set aside the sharp angles in my life. It's kind of scary thinking of doing that, honestly, because um, I'm really good at it. I'm good at being rough. Uh, I kind of took pride in it. It's part of my self-esteem, you know. Uh, it was tougher than most. And um, and I could, I could stab people with jagged edges. And uh, so the giving up of that um, is not something that I can do easily or quickly. Um, and it got me thinking, what do I replace it with? If I'm going to stop reacting in harshness or roughness, what do I, how do I respond? And so this passage uh, became more and more meaningful to me as I, as I approached it. Because... Uh, if, if God's at work as people and his character is what he wants to have come out in our character, then uh, there needs to be some tangible evidence of God working in us and, and, and a change in the way uh, I relate or you relate or we, or we relate to each other. And, uh, and kindness is one of those traits that's rooted in uh, God's character. You notice in the passage that we read, We lived in malice and envy and thing, but when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us. It was his kindness that appeared and, and was made manifest. And uh, unless you think this is only a, a New Testament idea, you know, and the God of the Old Testament's mean, which I hear all the time, sometimes from myself. Um, uh, Jeremiah chapter 9, this is what the Lord says. And we sang this in the last song that we just sang. Um, Let not the wise person boast of his wisdom or the strong person boast of his strength or the rich person boast of his riches. But let him who boasts, boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice and righteousness on earth. And in these I delight, declares the Lord. If you want to boast about something, boast that you know the Lord who exercises kindness. Well, that puts some pressure on us a little bit, you know, because um, that means I'm going to have to change. And uh, change doesn't come easy. But um, it means that I have to slow down a little bit and uh, not just react in old patterns, right? The same for you, for all of us. Uh, it's easy to snap and go into an old pattern. It's hard to pause and respond in kindness. Well, maybe not for all of you, but for me and some of you who I've dealt with <laughs> um, in other places, not in this church, of course, you know, never mind that. Uh, but see, I think that this change, that we stop doing our natural reactions, you know, when we're, we were living in malice and we were hating and we were being hated and all this stuff, all of that we set aside and we start a new action. And, and the action, we start kinding each other. That's the word. We're kinding each other. And it's, it's time for us to begin kinding. Um, it's not just something passive. It's, it's something that we do, 
And, and, and as we do it, it becomes actually a part of our character. And so uh, Titus says, you know, this is what we used to be. We were foolish, we were disobedient, we deceived, we were addicted to all kinds of passions and pleasures, we were enslaved by them, we lived in malice and envy. All, all of that is what we used to be. But now uh, we've been saved through the kindness of God and, and in Christ, the Holy Spirit works in us and begins this second thing. You know, what, there's almost two parts of it. One is that uh, we, we receive Christ into our life. We say, Lord, come into my life. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I confess my sins. I turn my life over to you. Okay, we're saved. We're going to heaven. Okay, we're not changed at that point. We're saved, whoopee, but we're not changed. And, and so he says, you know, the second part of this is that the Holy Spirit works in us and begins this transformation process. And, uh, you know, and I know that you can be saved and not be, uh, uh, not be changed because uh, I've been a pastor for a lot of years. So I've, I've spent a lifetime in churches. And I know that there's people who I'm going to see in heaven who are grumpy. That's just the way it is, you know? They're crappy, they're grumpy. I don't want to be around, except sometimes I'm in there with them. And there's other people probably saying this morning, I don't want to go to heaven because I don't want to be with that John character because he's so crabby, you know? So I need the Holy Spirit working in me, as you do, to begin this transformation to change us into uh, the person that, that God intended us to be. And that involves kinding. Now, something happens in us when, uh, you know, we're saved, but we're not changed. And uh, I've been learning a lot this year, the last couple of years, really, about addiction. You know, AA and NA and GA, that's my group, the Gamblers Anonymous. And, and uh, so uh, through Damien, and we've spent a lot of time in treatment centers and hospitals and groups and one-on-one -on -one times and counseling settings. I mean, this has been a... a re-education for me and a new vocabulary. And, and I was talking to Damien the other day and I said, you know, what is it? Uh, are all the groups the same? Are they, are, they, are they all really good people being nice to each other and stuff because they're all helping each other? Is that kind of the way it is? Because I have this belief that church should be more like an AA meeting. You know, it was Sinners Anonymous, you know. And, uh, but uh, he said, well, you know, actually, Dad, there's, I get so frustrated with some of these guys, and some of them are older, he said, but not always, but they're older. But they're, um, so we call them dry drunks. They, they've stopped drinking. They're, they're sober, but they've not recovered. They didn't go through recovery. And so he said they've got all the same characteristics that they had back when they were drunk. They're mean. They're, they know everything. They've got an answer for everything. They're telling everybody what to do, and they're not listening to anybody. And, they're, and, they're, and I want to just flee the room when they start talking. I want to get up and run out. Because they prey on the people who are trying to recover. You know? And I thought, wow. I, I, started, I thought of the church. <laughs> My gosh. Maybe the church is more like an AA meeting than I thought. We, we have dry drunk Christians. You know, we've been saved. Hooray. We're going to heaven. We have eternal life. We have a relationship with Jesus. But we're not changed. And so we smack each other and we know better and all these different things. And, and, and we, don't, we, we aren't kinding like God wants us to do. And, and I'm, I'm guilty as anybody. So I gotta ask, what is this kindness? Okay, so here we've got our board. Um, we move the, I gotta set the stage, okay. Choreography. Not dance, but choreography here. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Here's your Greek word for the day. Everybody needs a Greek word when they start their day, right? I could write it in Greek letters for you, but that wouldn't really help you much. Kratotes. 
Kretotes. And this word is the word that is in the, uh, the original Greek for this word kindness. The Kretotes of God is what saved us. And it's a really interesting word because it, it, does, um, it does mean kind uh, in a lot of contexts, but it's also uh, in different places in the Bible. Wait, did I spell it right? No, I didn't. I'm sorry. Jeremy is back there with his Greek Bible. Christos. Christos. Okay, there we go. Now, there, that makes a difference, doesn't it? Can you say it? Christos. Yeah. All right. Kind of like tostada, but different. Okay, so <clears throat> this word, here's one in, in, in Luke, I think chapter 5, Jesus is talking about their. Uh, there's old wine, and you don't put it in new wine skins because uh, the old wine and the new wine don't mix and all those kinds. Of, remember that parable? Remember that? <clears throat> and he goes through it, and he says, you know, the, the new wine will break out of the old wine skins and, and spill and everything. And then he says at the very end of the parable, he says, and besides, the old wine is Crestodes. That's the word. It's kind. Well, actually, in that context, it means it's mellow. You know? Uh, remember, those of you who are my age or, or in the vicinity, remember, you know, hey, mellow out, dude. <laughs> That's crestotes. Mellow out, like the old wine. Uh, now, you know, we have Westfall Vineyards uh, down in San Diego, and uh, pretty soon the winery it's being built, and we're going to have the tasting room and everything. And I got to tell you, um, I've got 400 bottles of wine waiting to uh, serve somebody, and uh, you got to serve somebody, Dylan said. And uh, and and the thing is, it Jesus was actually right. You can get some new wine, and it's and it's harsh. And, and it's sometimes uh, the, uh, the tannins in it, you know, they get, they get, they get the edge on your teeth. And you go, I don't know, I better have a, a, a really flavorful pizza to go with this thing, because this is tough. But then you get an old wine, and, and, and it's mellower and full and softer. It's softer. The same ingredients, completely, but it's softer. And that's what, that's what the Bible's telling us. This is the, the kindness that could be our character. That's that's mellow. And uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, another place. Um, let's see, Matthew eleven. Uh, you know the passage where it says, uh, Jesus says, "Come to me, all you who are tired and overburdened, and, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light." Right? The word "my yoke" is easy. My yoke is crestotes. It's kind? No. It's smooth. It's smooth. It's, it's easy. It fits you. It's, it's designed for you. It's, it's, uh, it's something that, that fits you. And you're not, it's not rough and irritating and, and scraping you. I love this word. I love this word. And I hope that, you know, starting today, this can start to become part of my character. Uh, I don't want to be the harsh one anymore. I, I want to be uh, easy, smooth, mellow, kind. Like the kindness of God that saved us. That's really important. So, what is it, uh, what blocks us from kinding in our lives? Think about that. You probably have your own list of what would block you from kinding. Uh, even if you think it's a good idea, there's things that happen that, that, that block it. And one of them is that uh, some of the, we have a tendency to look past people. Uh, people are kind of in the way sometimes and, and blocking our view and blocking our way and we want to get past them and we don't see them. We don't hear them. They're not personal to us. And that's how uh, stereotypes are formed. We just lump them together so we can go by, right? That's how our stereotypes are. And uh, if you can if you can throw somebody into a pile with everybody else, you don't have to deal with them as a person. 
Uh, now, if you, okay, I'll talk personally. So uh, in my family, uh, my dad was a pretty strong racist. And uh, he told Damien his mental illness came from the shanty Irish blood that his mother gave him. You know, that's pretty cool right there. So, um, <laughs> you know, sorry, Dave, <laughs> as an Ulsterman. But uh, so uh, my dad, we were lived in San Diego, and I grew up in San Diego. San Diego used to be Mexico. You know, I knew that. Everybody knows that. And uh, every street is a Spanish name, you know. And uh, we drove down Camino del Rey. It's probably that way since the <laughs> dawn of time. But we would be standing in line at a uh, uh, the great taco stands there. And so we'd be standing in line with these little taquerias and a uh, big line. And my dad would be going, you know, you can tell the really good taquerias because the wetbacks just line up here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, shut up. <laughs> Didn't think anything of it. This is the way it was all the time. The, the weirdest thing was that I couldn't figure out as a kid was that my father's very best friend was Miguel Brissetta from Mexico. And the Brissetta family would come up and visit us and we'd go on vacations together. They were friends from college at UCLA and uh, both engineers and they had a lifetime friendship and we, they, my parents would go down to Mexico and stay with them, and, and, and it was this incredible friendship. And we found a, a stack of letters when my dad died a couple years ago. A stack of letters uh, exchanged between him and Miguel Brissetta, his friend. Now get this, they were written in Spanish. Not just Miguel Brissetta's letter, but then my dad would write back to him in Spanish. I never knew this. I never knew this. My dad never encouraged us to speak Spanish, or we never knew he knew it. And I found out when it's personal, when there's a person there, there was all kinds of crestotes. And in fact, when my mom was dying a few days before she died, the Brissettas flew up from Mexico City to see her because they were lifetime friends. So if you could see a person as a person, kindness will flow. But when we see them as them, it's easy to be harsh. It's easy to have rough edges. It's time for me and for you to start seeing people for who they are, and not lump them and toss them away. Second thing is, we miss kinding because we get uh, an attitude of, I know what's best for you. And this is a pastor's downfall, because actually I do know what's best for you, okay? I just want to tell you that I do know. But when we think we have a better way, there is no kindness. Even if we're right, that's the crazy thing. Even if our way is better, as soon as we say it, we're not kinding. And I learned this early on in our marriage. Uh, I, I had a lifetime of this, actually. But we, Eileen and I have never, in the 45 years or so of our marriage, been able to grocery shop together. We can't do it. She'll sit in the car at the QFC while I go in. Or if we go in, she'll get her cart, and I'll get mine, and we'll go our own ways. Is that weird? 45 years of marriage. Why? Because when it comes to grocery shopping, I'm a dry drunk. The old patterns kick in, and I have a better way. So what would happen is, as a young married couple, we would go down the aisles, and she would try and pick some uh, ketchup bottle and put it in the cart, and then I'd take it out of the cart and put it back and get the cheaper one, the off-brand to put it in. Over and over and over again. She had a name for this. She said... You think you have a better way. You're the guy with a better way. 
And I wanted to say, yes. I'm so glad you've realized it. <laughs> yes. Thank you for noticing. I have the better way. But you know what? That didn't make for a good marriage. And it certainly made grocery shopping tougher. And so, you know, she said, finally said, go your way. You go get whatever you want. I'll get what I want. But don't criticize my choices. You know, don't take my whole cart and put it back and get new stuff. We do this to each other all the time. And, and in, uh, and in uh, psychology, they call this being prescriptive. Somebody comes and says, well, what should I do about this? And, and we have a prescription to give them. Well, here, take two of these and call me in the morning. Fix it. This is what you do. Here's the answer. People don't want the answer. They want the relationship. They don't want an answer. As soon as we give the answer, because we know better, there is no relationship. It's over. Now, what does kindness look like? It looks like stopping in the middle of all of our stuff and looking people in the eye and asking them, what's going on? And then not try to fix it. I'll give you an example of it. A couple of weeks ago, Dave, you were there at the hospital, Swedish hospital. Uh, went down to visit Cindy. I was nervous, so I put the flowers in first to see if, any, if she threw anything at me. You know? And then, then I went in, because no visitors, you know. But I snuck in, and uh, we sat around a bed, and she was sharing. We're having a really, really good talk. And then suddenly, in the middle of it, she just stopped, turned, and looked at me and went, well, how are the West Falls? <laughs> I don't know. I thought, what a kind person. In the middle of her pain and her struggle and the issues and all of those things, she stopped the whole conversation and turned the focus around and made it personal. How are the West Falls? That's prestotes. I think it's time for us to do this. It's time to let go of the rough edges. I think that the person who cut me off on Aurora was right. It does take a big self-image to drive a car like he was driving. He was right. But he was also right that mean people suck. And too often I'm one of them. I don't want that anymore for me. I don't want that for you. I want to release you from it today so that we can begin kinding each other and the folks that God brings in our heart. So that's my, what I'm giving up for Lent. And I uh, hope you'll join me in it. Let's pray. Lord, we surrender to you and we ask that your Holy Spirit will continue the transformation process in, it, in us. Lord, we recognize it's not enough to be saved. We want your character. So grow us as your people. Teach us, transform us, change us, and we'll give you the glory. Amen.